So in this video, I will discuss free falling motion and projectile motion. Uh, so around the year 1609, Galileo studied and experimented with the acceleration of fallen objects, okay, by dropping various objects from the leaning tower of Pisa. And he discovered that when air resistance is neglected, all objects would fall with the same constant acceleration regardless of their mass or size. Okay, so these two objects would hit the ground at the same time. Uh, so the acceleration is denoted by G uh, and is known as the free fall acceleration because air resistance is neglected um, and the object is assumed to be moving freely under gravity alone. Uh, so the direction of the vector G is downwards uh, towards the Earth uh, center, okay? And its value varies with altitude as well as other factors. But in solving problems involving objects falling near the surface of the Earth, G can be assumed to be constant with a value of uh, 9.8 meter per second square and a resistance can be neglected. Uh, so a freely falling motion is motion along a straight line and we take it to be along the y-axis, okay, where the positive direction is upwards. Uh, and the object moves either upward or downward, so it is a one-dimensional motion with constant acceleration. Uh, and this means that we can use the same equations we derived in the first video of kinematics, which were the equations uh, for a motion in one direction with constant acceleration, okay? Um, and we just need to, because the motion is along the y, we replace x by y. And we know the acceleration is directed in the negative y direction, so we replace a by minus g. Uh, so these are the equations for uh, a free falling motion. And the figure here shows the velocity versus time uh, graph and the displacement versus time. For an object thrown upwards, then it falls downwards to the same position. So as the object is moving upwards, its velocity will decrease until it reaches uh, zero at the maximum height. Then it starts to increase in the negative y direction until it reaches uh, the same value of the initial speed. Okay, uh, And this uh, graph shows how uh, the displacement y varies with t as uh, t square. Okay? And the table here shows the displacement, velocity, and acceleration of an object that is dropped from rest, okay? So initially the velocity is zero, then it starts to increase steadily with time by 9.8 meter per second each second, okay? Uh, so at t is equal to one, the velocity is minus 9.8, um, then at two, it's uh, minus 19.6, and then minus 29.4 meter per second. And throughout the motion, as you can see, uh, this vector of velocity is um, increasing, but the vector of the acceleration is constant throughout the motion because the force of gravity is the same on the object uh, while it is falling, okay? Uh, so note here that uh, both the displacement and velocity are negative because the motion is in the negative y direction, okay? Uh, so let's consider two examples. So in the first example, let's suppose that an object is thrown upwards uh, with an initial velocity of 15 meter per second and we want to find the maximum height reached by this object and the time it takes, it, uh, it takes this object to reach that height, okay? So at the maximum height, the ball stops, uh, then it starts to fall down again, right? So at the maximum height, the final velocity is zero. Uh, and so we can find the time it takes the object to reach the maximum height using this equation. Uh, so the object will reach the maximum height at 1.5 seconds. Uh, and note here that we took the initial uh, y position, y not equal to zero at uh, the ground, okay? Uh, so we want to find now the maximum height, so we use this equation. Um, and we substitute for uh, V0 and T at the maximum height is 1.5 and we get 11.5 meters. 
Uh, so let's consider another example for an object that is dropped from rest uh, at a height of 30 meters above the ground, okay? And we want to find the time it takes the object to hit the ground and the velocity just before it hits the ground, okay? So because the object is dropped, it means it is released from rest, so the initial velocity is zero. And let's take the initial y position uh, equal to zero at uh, the position where it is dropped okay uh, and y final will be minus 30 uh, meters because it's uh, below zero okay uh, so we use this equation to find uh, the time so we substitute for y minus y initial and v naught is zero and we get uh, the time is equal to 2.5 seconds uh, then we use this equation to find the velocity of the object just before it hits the ground. Uh, so we substitute for t and we get v is equal to minus 24.5 meter per second. Uh, so now let's consider motion in two dimensions with constant acceleration. So for motion in two dimensions, the displacement vector and velocity and acceleration vectors are given by these equations. Uh, so each will have an x and y component uh, and i and j are unit vectors in the x and y directions respectively, okay? So if the magnitude of the acceleration is constant, then both ax and ay are constant, okay? So the kinematic equations uh, we derived uh, in the first video of kinematics for one-dimensional motion with constant acceleration um, will now apply in each direction, okay? So we can apply, we have the kinematic equations for each direction. Uh, so we will now consider projectile motion, which is a special case of a two-dimensional motion, okay? So projectile motion is the motion of an object that is thrown or projected into air at some angle with respect to the surface of the earth. Uh, such as the motion of a baseball thrown into air or uh, an object dropped from an airplane. Uh, so this projectile motion uh, is just like a free fall motion in that the object is moving under gravity alone and air resistance is neglected, okay? But the difference here is that the velocity of the object has both an X component and a Y component, okay? instead of uh, a Y component alone, like in free fall, where the object is just moving either upward or downwards in a straight line path. Here, because of the X component of velocity, the object follows a curved uh, parabolic path, okay? Uh, so again, as in free fall, if we neglect air resistance and if the free fall acceleration G is constant both in magnitude and direction uh, throughout the object's motion, um, then the path of the projectile is always a parabola, okay, that depends on the magnitude and direction of the initial velocity. Uh, and so the projectile can be considered to be a combination of a vertical motion with constant acceleration in the y direction, uh, which is uh, minus 9.8 meter per second square, uh, and a horizontal motion with zero acceleration, okay, which is a constant velocity motion. Uh, so when the object is projected into air at some angle and initial velocity v0, uh, the y component of the velocity will first decrease until the object reach uh, the maximum height, then it will start to increase in the negative y direction as the object falls back again to the ground, okay? So the motion along the y-axis is just like a free fall motion. Uh, and for the motion along the x-axis, uh, since there is no acceleration in that direction uh, because there is no uh, force of gravity, uh, because that force is directed only along the y-direction, uh, then the acceleration along the x-direction is zero, okay? And so the x-component of the velocity will remain constant throughout the projectile motion. So the x component of the initial velocity is equal to v naught x uh, equal to v naught uh, cosine theta naught and v naught y is equal to v naught sine theta naught. Um, and let's suppose that at t is equal to zero, x naught is equal to zero and y naught is equal to zero. And we know that uh, ay is equal to minus g and ax is equal to zero. 
So if we substitute here, we get these equations for a projectile motion. Uh, so as you can see, the x component of the velocity of the projectile is constant throughout the motion. Okay, the y component of the velocity is equal to v naught sine theta naught minus g t. So it varies just like a free fall motion. Okay, the displacement along the x is equal to v naught cosine theta naught t, and the displacement along the y uh, is given by this equation. So it varies uh, like free fall. And here is just a constant velocity motion. Uh, so if we combine these two and we substitute uh, for t, we get this equation. Uh, so this is the equation of the path of the object, of the projectile, okay? So as you can see, it has the form of ax minus bx squared, where a and b are constant. So it is the equation of a parabola. Uh, so when air resistance is neglected, the trajectory of the projectile is always a parabola, okay? Uh, so let's now calculate the time it takes the projectile to reach the maximum height, uh, T1, and also the maximum height, H max, and uh, the range R, which is the maximum displacement along the x-axis. Uh, so as we said, because the uh, x component of the velocity is constant throughout the motion, the y component is the component that is changing uh, due to gravity, okay? So at the maximum height, the y component of the velocity is equal to zero. So if we substitute uh, here, we get uh, the time at the maximum height. So it is equal to v naught sine theta naught over g. Uh, so if we take this time t1 at the maximum height and we substitute it here in this equation, we get h max um, is equal to v naught square sine square theta naught over 2g. Okay, and if we want to calculate the range r, then the maximum horizontal range is at t is equal to double uh, t1, right? So we substitute for 2 uh, t1 here. And we get r is equal to v naught square uh, sine 2 theta naught over g. Uh, so let's consider two examples. So in the first example, suppose that a baseball is thrown at an angle of 35 degrees to the horizontal with an initial speed of uh, 20 meter per second, okay? And suppose we neglect air resistance. So we want to calculate the maximum height reached by the ball. And we have this expression for the maximum height, so we substitute for v naught, which is 20, and theta naught is 35 degrees, and we get the maximum height is equal to 6.7 meters. Um, and we want to find also the time it takes the ball to reach the maximum height. Uh, so this is the expression for uh, t1 at the maximum height. It is equal to 1.2 seconds, okay? And so the total time of flight uh, from the time it is uh, thrown until it hit the ground is 2t1, which is equal to 2.4 seconds. Uh, and the range r is equal to 20 square sine 235 over 9.8 meter per second square, which is equal to 38.4 meters, okay? Uh, so let's now also calculate uh, the x component of the velocity just before the uh, ball hits the ground. And as we said, the x component is constant throughout the flight and it is equal to the um, initial x component, uh, which is uh, v naught cosine theta naught equal to 16.4 meter per second. Uh, and for the y component of velocity uh, before it hits the ground, uh, let's uh, take uh, the initial point here, so v naught y is equal to zero here, and then the time uh, during uh, this interval is t1, right? And this gives v y is equal to minus 11.7 meter per second. Um, and it is negative because uh, the motion uh, is in the negative direction here, okay? So the magnitude of the velocity or speed just before the ball hits the ground is the square root of vx square plus vy square and it is equal to 20 meter per second. Uh, 
Uh, so now let's consider another example in which an object is thrown, for example, from a table of height of 0.6 meters, okay, with an initial horizontal velocity of 1 meter per second. And we want to find the horizontal distance between the releasing point here um, and where it hits the ground. Uh, so let's consider, uh, consider x0 uh, zero is equal to 0 and y0 is equal to 0 at the initial point here. And since the initial velocity has only uh, an x component, then the y component of the initial velocity is zero, right? Uh, and so we can write that uh, y uh, is equal to minus half g t squared because uh, vy naught is equal to zero, okay? Uh, and also we have x is equal to v naught x times t. And so the time it takes the ball to reach the ground is equal to square root of minus 2y over g and y is equal to minus 0.6 meters because we took um, y naught is equal to 0 here. So this is here is minus uh, 0.6 meters and this gives uh, total time of flight is equal uh, to, uh, to 0.34 seconds. Uh, and the horizontal distance uh, covered by the object during its flight is equal to v naught xt and it is equal to 0.34 meters. Uh, so thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.